What well, it is, Undead Unlocked Fan. Since you made me a message so earlier in the message, so the round table company wants to subscribe to this pit. I usually don't do Undead Unlocked in the living room. How do you like the scenery? Maybe because this video is late. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, let's get right into it. Undead Unlocked this episode. At the end of last week's episode, you know I go to Twitter for thumbnail material, and everybody was already all hyped about one thing. Victor coming next week. Well, next week has arrived. So if we get straight into it, I didn't know anything about Victor or what Victor was, or I expected, to, especially then. Oh, phone call. I especially then. Another phone call. Interruptions. Anyways, like I was saying, I didn't think Victor was gonna be Andy. So yeah, being hyped up that Victor was coming it wasn't exactly a spoiler. So I did look. I did have said this before actually. It's done a good job in that spoiler shit. But when it comes to something we finally got to figure out, it was finally figuring out freaking Shin's ability. It's probably getting outshined, outshined by Victor. Shin came through here and finally talked about how he is untruth, which is a lie. Lying ass, fake ass motherfucker. But jokes aside, basically when he looks at a target, the target he, basically they do the opposite of what they're thinking they're doing. Which explains because when Andy was trying to hurt him, he absolutely could not. When Fuku was running away from him, um, she would end up running backwards, running towards him. And mind you, this wasn't an actual explanation that was said by Shin. We got that from the narrator, finally. So when he was finally spoiled, his father didn't know this. The only drawback from this, there has to be some fondness of Shin there. But I, I, I think that's a very loose definition because because of that fondness, the only reason why Andy would be fond of Shin for any reason because Andy wants to beat him up. Wants to get that W from the fight that he didn't finish last time. Especially since Shin's going around saying pretty much since he didn't lose, meaning he won. Kogi also disagree, but okay. And even like here, like the fondness of Shin here is swear just wanting to beat him up. So it's kind of like, if you, what, if you think about this guy whatsoever, if you meet Shin in the streets, it's on. That's all it takes. I mean, before it even Fuku and Shin got cool, Fuku was just pissed at him, so I was like... <laughs> Then line between love and hate. And that smile he gave while Untruth came across the screen, which he did twice in this episode, saying that he was finally able to meet him. I'm not even gonna say that him was Victor or whoever him was. If it was Victor, it makes sense. However, if it wasn't, cause for concern. But yes, after that, Andy starts to come up with his own idea and of poking Fuku in the belly because her belly is starting to stick out. Now, apparently, Fuku has been eating a lot of good food. Huge her hamburgers, apparently. Burgers. And she hasn't really been exercising since everything tastes good and she's been eating, let alone drinking. So I guess the beer belly or just fat belly is starting to take shape. However, you haven't known Andy for that long, to my understanding. Through the course of the past seven episodes, how much time has gone by for real? As long as we got to like episode three, it was like three days. Trust me when I tell you, I know what it's like to have a bad metabolism, but... Get, you got fat for after a week? I Man, anime logic refuses to show it, but hey, I mean, you would know more than anybody, right? And Fuku does like Andy, let's be real with it. And her being embarrassed by this and starts flipping out is enough unlucky for the freaking <laughs> ground to crack underneath on it. Wouldn't that cause a giant earthquake? And he then falls. I forgot to mention that we figured out Spoil's ability. Not really, but when it comes to. His spoiled thing when it comes to his range only applies to his body, so when he stuck his head out from his body right in front of Fuku, it doesn't apply to his head, which is why Fuku didn't get spoiled, which I definitely picked up on last week. Which causes Shin to use that huge stick of his to stretch out and start beating Spoil's ass. With that being said, the plan is made to launch Spoil and Andy into space. And have them finish the fight up there, however, in close proximity to Spoil, spoil Andy's going to have to be able to get it done without spoiling completely, I guess. If that, was, if that was that big of a threat, then wouldn't Andy just do that to have the greatest? Well, that wouldn't be the greatest death ever, but... Uh, is there a line here? Do you want to just die, or it does it have to be a flashy as fuck? Bucky. Hey man, I just had the greatest death ever by having sex with a girl with unlucky powers. You get spoiled in space. But I guess at that point, really, it depends who you talk to. Fuck it, I would take the sex. Shit. But nonetheless, when it came to this, Shin told Andy he could do it if he was his old self. Now, Andy has some stipulations about this, but he didn't really say. And he goes through with it by taking the card out of his head, which Fuku reminded Shin that what Andy said, what he does is he goes off the rails, which we slightly seen before in earlier episodes. However, that absolutely is not what happened here. When Andy took the card out of his head, Shin launched him both in the space with a giant stick. And what happened out there in space, Spoiler tried to talk his shit, but didn't work. Andy grows long black hair, spiky hair, very shit shown in protagonist. Actually, most shortest side character, honestly. Looks more serious 
Well, as serious as a serious face, to be real. But the, the, just the tone of it all is different. And his demeanor changes. And I know this is day of production on this, so excuse me, but now coming off as more legitimately a JoJo character than ever. Then the fight starts. But what happens here is Andy's, excuse me, Victor, who is now here, his regeneration ability is god tier now. It just does it at a blink of an eye. So when he shoots his parts bullets, he's not even shooting bullets anymore because those bullets will start to regenerate before he even hits the target. Now think about that for a second. Something as fast as a bullet regenerating that quickly. And if it wasn't for the fact that we're watching an anime right now, we wouldn't be able to see him regenerate like that with the naked eye. And not only did we come to find that the pants came with it when he came back down to earth, so did the sword. He's regenerated more than himself because these new beans that he made just started cutting things up. And his sword got cut into a million pieces before Spoiler even could actually comprehend what was happening. Not a million pieces, it wasn't that much. He just cut his body up. We were like 10, 15 pieces. I don't mean to exaggerate. And then putting the icing on the cake for Victor's first impression. Spoiler has been cut up. The head has been separated. The core has been found. And it's that moment where Andy, excuse me, once again, that moment when Victor was like, okay, now let's have some fun. Now, at that point, he wants to have some fun. Off screen, no less. When the battle at with the swiftness of a river was not what it was, it was this. Whatever we didn't see yet. <laughs> it, 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 now, of course, back down to earth, eventually Victor comes back down with spoil. So the plot for that moment has been handled. However, some evident of Victor don't give a fuck. There's a moment where presumably Andy tries to get back into the fold. Victor starts to have a headache and he tells Andy, nah. Almost kind of like Jujutsu Kaisen second, uh, yeah, I just made that reference. Because it, it, it kind of felt like Andy was going to eventually take control eventually, but Victor was just like, nah, too soon, not yet. And he concludes that Fuko is the reason why Andy is trying to be Andy again, and that she is a problem. Now, Shin's intercepts this and gets in the way between Victor and, and uh, Fuko. I, I've been wanting to say Andy at this point. And now the new threat right here is indeed Victor as Shin and Victor start to go at it. At least that's one way to put it, because it's really not what happened at all. Victor takes out Andy easily. It's Andy again. Victor takes out Shin easily. And he punches Shin and realizes his Shin's ability did not activate. He actually took the fullness of that punch. At least those muscles are on for sure when Shin actually able to take a hit. However, it doesn't take much for Shin to go down. And right before he goes after Fuko, Fuko starts trying to plead with Andy. And she's basically telling him everything that was promised to her. They was going to go on road trips. They was going to do this and that. Join the union. Fall in love. A lot of things that Fuko didn't expect or think would happen. But at the same time, once it was put on the table, she was looking forward to. Basically wanted Andy to give her everything that he promised her. Which, let's deny any windows and not look too much into that. She's looking for that dick. She's not looking too much into that one. However, Victor tells Fuko that she's doing nothing right now. <laughs> but Shin comes in and says, do not underestimate the potential of humans. Now Shin has some kind of back move on Victor. And here's, here's something about Victor we start to notice. Victor lets them hit him. It's one thing to be undead. <laughs> it's another thing. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Every time Victor hit Shin. When Victor hits Shin, Shin's lungs break, but so does Victor. However, Victor is undead, so it really doesn't bother him. However, when we were facing spoiler earlier, it felt very much felt like we were fighting zombies. And the ability to hit somebody with so much force that you don't care about your limbs breaking, and then you can just fall off his limbs and we make new ones, well, that's not really a zombie piece. And it was called zombie by Fuko right in the beginning. Is Victor really the zombie Andy which you guys thought you was getting in the first place? I digress though. Shin ends up calling the Union. The sky breaks and the Union appears. All the members of the Union presumably. What you guys were doing, nothing else? I'm just saying, like, did you guys complete your missions that you were supposed to go on? Did you guys just neglect all that and we was the only ones out here working? Union, you gotta do better. Oh, you're doing too good for me to notice. You let me know. And honestly, it looks like they're getting the upper hand on Victor when they jump him. But this is just a little notes put there, like they were talking about how they burn and, and Victor's skin, saying that it's gonna be hard for him to regenerate that way. But he kinda just cuts back and be like, hey, that would worked on Andy. But it's that real shit. And better words cannot be said here, because the tone of this episode has shifted once again when the person that stepped up was the number one. A white haired masked woman with the sword. The one that Fuko needs to take that seat from. Pulls out the sword, draws her sword, and walks towards Victor. 
as we reach the new to be continued sign. I have talked briefly before about some show this season hyping up the next week episode with a big battle and at least an episode defining battle. And quite frankly, every time Undead or Luck has come up with that, they have delivered. Chain Untruth, Unchanged, Spoil, and now Victor, Undead on Luck has delivered. Actually, when it comes to keeping the hype train going, I can play the show next to Shy Hero and Shangri La Frontier. Quite frankly, now that we're in week seven or eight, we're standing the test of time right now is indeed Undead on Luck. The way things are looking, that train's gonna keep on going, yo. But let me get about it. Looking very forward to see what the number one can do. And let's get Andy back. If y'all watch this video, let me see. Yeah, y'all watch this video, leave me a comment. I don't know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the spin move. Mm-hmm.